Whether it's climate change or whether it's the worst drought on record, we're not sure, but it's really hit, hitting people hard. You know, this is almost a perfect storm, this particular drought. They have been stuck in the worst drought in living memory. People start um, losing hope. The ground is turning to dust. The drought is now so bad, a staggering 69% of the state is drought declared. 2013 was the driest on record. Unfortunately, there is no rain in the forecast this week. This drought is testing the community like never before. So picture a country that's geographically the size of the United States, but with about 24 million people, 90% of whom live along the coast. And suddenly you have this major drought, and most of your sources of water supply are located very close to the city in catchments, in reservoirs. What do you do? You have to pull out all the stops. It was realized that we are in deep trouble when it comes to water resource. So we had 14 years of drought. It's millennium drought. It's never happened before. And every city in Australia was running out of water. It was realized that storm water that falls on city is a huge untapped source of water. And it sounds easy on paper, but how you capture that water, how you treat that water, how you store that water. It's actually very hard, but it's doable. Stone water is a diffuse source of pollution. To solve that diffuse pollution, you need lots of decentralized systems that can deal with the pollution as it comes. Green systems, which use plants and soil, and they clean stone water as it comes. And what's very important, they fit in urban environment. You know, some of the things that they did were quite progressive. In particular, we're studying some of the changes to the water supply infrastructure. In particular, their use of stormwater runoff as a water resource because that's quite innovative and has a lot of implications for places like Southern California. For decades, scientists and social scientists and urban planners would look at water as something that's managed in different boxes. And Pyre is really about a new way of thinking about water. It's really about integrated water management. There's only one water. And cities, to thrive and survive and to have a good quality of life, have to figure out how to better manage every drop. So that's really what Pyre is all about. I'd call it a new paradigm for water management. Pyre is Partnerships for International Research and Education, which is really the only program that I'm aware of specifically focused on um, research with international partners. But our particular pyre is focused on, on water supply infrastructure and, and adapting to uh, drought. So it's just one of these solutions which is logical at so many different levels, but because our undergrads are typically not trained uh, to think about these issues, it's sort of a self-perpetuating problem. One of the objectives of the pyre is really to try to reverse that trend by opening the undergrads' minds to the various aspects of the problem and how it can be solved. The way that the biofilters are designed, there's lots of different types. And this particular one is a standalone biofilter that's right in the middle of an urban area and in the middle of a park, really visible to lots of people. There's signage here that explains to people what this is doing. And so it's both the water quality improvement and it also has an educational component to it. It's also planted with a lot of interesting plants, a high diversity of plants, and so it probably has a high ecological value too, although that's one of the things that we're looking at. So the basic way that the field sampling protocol works is we'll probably start with setting up plant transects. So you'd run sort of a meter tape along your biofilter and then you'd go and you'd measure sort of all of the different contact points where the plants uh, cross a pole of a given height and that gets you an idea of what the cover of the different plants is in those systems. Right. 5.3. You'd move on to taking clippings from different plants to get specific leaf area. Other things that we're interested in are the root mass. So we take cores and look at all the roots in that. The students come back and they, they sieve them. I guess the final one is the augers. They're a giant metal pole with a handle on the top and they have little teeth on the bottom for a core and you punch it down into the soil and you twist and pull out the first core and that will be just near the surface. You then add it back in and you pull another core at a different depth and you're basically doing a depth profiling. The students are really focusing right now on the ecology but overall the class is focusing on both the ecology and sort of the social science aspects of it. 
And the students are great. It's nice to be at a university because there's always young, energetic, mostly optimistic students, and, uh, and they keep you young. My name is Freddy Garcia. I currently go to school at UC San Diego, majoring in environmental engineering. Traveling across the world, I mean, it's a crazy experience. It opens up your mind a little bit, kind of see a different environment. What is different worms? These one of them has an antenna. Oh, wow. Thing. Okay, cool. So the... that's actually a centipede. For me, particularly, I love the kind of hands-on experience. Uh, it's especially in as an engineer. So oh. this is Swede too, right? This little... That one, yeah. Uh -huh. My name is Monique Grimaldi, and I just graduated from UC San Diego uh, with a BS in environmental engineering and a minor in urban studies and planning. My motivation for going on a program like this was really from the fact that this program advertised itself as a cross-disciplinary program. I'm getting to work with, you know, environmental scientists, planners, biologists, and doing work that would be more representative of things that I could actually do as a career later on. Are you pushing down too? No. Okay. Being able to travel to Australia is really important for this program um, and as a recent graduate just to see how other countries are solving you know, some of today's toughest challenges. We have to start looking at a global context but also like a regional context and recognizing that you know, the environment and environmental consequences don't have you know, borders and boundaries and they affect everybody. At this point, we're gathering all this data and then going to put it into a uh, SEM model to have a better understanding how all these little factors make the biofilter efficient. The work that we're doing is really fun because it gives us a chance to do like hands-on field work. A lot of the times, you know, in an undergraduate, mostly you're focusing on your classes, whereas here you actually get to come out and do field work. Being able to like go out in the field, it makes science fun. Science is fun. This whole experience has been incredibly fun. Uh, every day I'm doing something different, exploring the city or I do gain those hands-on technical skills. It's been a lot of work at the same time. We just started getting into the sampling. It's kind of incredible having this whole experience. It's been molding my character a lot. Yeah, at this point I would definitely would not trade it for anything else, any other experience that I could have. This program has definitely encouraged me further to pursue a career dealing with water. Water is really important because I think a lot of people don't understand anymore like where water comes from. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, out of all the water on the earth, only like 3% of that is fresh water and even a smaller fraction of that is accessible fresh water. The energy and the enthusiasm and really the training that the students have is very inspiring. I worry a little bit about the generation because I think we've left them some really significant environmental problems. I think that, you know, it does take a certain kind of personality to learn all these things about all the environmental problems and still want to try to find solutions. One of the really beautiful things about the Pyre as it's evolved is its vertical integration. When we bring the undergrads to Australia, it's not just about undergraduate education, it's about you know, educating everybody. So we're all participating uh, in this process, we're all learning, um, and we're all generating data that ultimately will be published. So it's everything from education to research. We had a saying at Caltech that students are future colleagues, right? And it's absolutely true. Obviously, all of these students will have their own trajectory when they go out and they'll do their own thing, but I'm very proud of them, and I'm sure they will make us proud. <laughs> One of the things that many scholars around the world are realizing is that we can create a different world and we can use the city as a kind of fulcrum for something that we could call a water sustainable city where cities learn to harvest stormwater, attenuate contaminants through the kinds of biofiltration methods that you see here in Melbourne. It's not going to be easy, it's not something that in two or three years we're going to change the world. We're now at a point where we can redesign cities to really be part of an ecosystem. And I think that's the kind of world we could have in another 25 years or so, if we start now, and if we adopt the kinds of things we're learning. Pyre is really a great program, and I think it's the kind of research program that those of us that have worked our careers in water really, I think, covet the opportunity to work in, where we can work with scholars in other disciplines, in another country, uh, and really apply our research to solving problems. Not just thinking great thoughts in an abstract sense, but really using what we learn to help gradually improve the way we really manage this very precious resource.